Hello and good evening. Welcome to our Sunday talk. And uh, today's topic is so interesting for all of us. It's about discovering the real self. So today we are really being yourself. And this is, this is something for all of us. And we have a special guest from South Africa. Belinda is with us, really alive and not just virtual. So that's, uh, for us it's like a celebration after a year and a half, no visitors to have in our meditation center. Someone abroad coming, so this is a wonderful occasion. Um, Belinda, you have been with Brahma Kumaris 33 years. That's a long journey mm -hmm. and I think uh, what I have learned from you, you have really made a path where you are really, um, how could I say, truthful for yourself. You're taking your stops, uh, moments to stop and being honest for yourself. Where I'm heading, what should I do now? So really looking forward about your insights, about what it is to be the real self. Thank you, Gita, and good evening, everyone. It's lovely to be here. I think um, it's many years um, that I've been hoping to come to Finland, and so it's very special, actually, to be here in reality and not just virtually. So thank you for the welcome. Hmm. So. I would like to, maybe for the beginning, this real self. We know in our life that sometimes we feel uh, not good about ourselves, that something is wrong. And um, we get these feelings that I should be just me. Why can't I be just me? How would you define what is the real self and what is the false me? Well, it's a good question and I think that um, perhaps it does take a, a long time, a lifetime to really discover, rediscover actually, the real self. And I think that um, we learn at a very early age to disguise our real self because if we think about children, mm. they're so spontaneous and you know, there's so many funny stories about children. You know, there's this one story about someone coming to the front door and knocking. And the child opens the door and says, Mommy says she's not here. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they, their children can be incredibly sort of honest and um, really authentic. But um, things happen in life. And we learn to hide ourselves away. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, it's something we all long for because we often say things like, I just want to be myself. Or when I'm with this person, I feel I can really be myself. Mm -hmm. And why, why do we say that? Actually, because that person is non-threatening. Mm. And so we let down our guard mm. and we were able to just oh, just be ourselves. Mm. Is that also why we usually feel very comfortable with children? Yeah, I, I think so because they're so real and it kind of draws it out of us. Yes. That um, children can actually pick up quite quickly if you're not authentic and they they yeah. want you to be authentic yeah i don't know about you mm -hmm. i know that you have two children mm -hmm. and two grandchildren mm -hmm. so you're very experienced but sometimes with children you feel like you cannot put any mask they will they will feel it mm -hmm. and they will right away kind of withdraw yeah. if yeah. you are not real yeah. so yeah, sometimes a moment of honesty Yes. Very true. Yeah. So, uh, 
what it is, uh, is there something that happens to us when we're children that we kind of lose that authenticity? Mm. Yeah, it's, um, it's quite sad actually, but um, at a very early age, um, we, we learn how to either get what we need and we learn it by adapting and, and creating um, different behaviors. Or alternatively, if we get hurt, we will um, learn another behavior to avoid that pain. And so it's interesting how if we look back in our early childhood, very often there is a memory. And I'm very interested in memories because so many things happen in our lives, but they are very specific things that we remember. Okay. And those memories are like flags. And if we, are, if we have the courage to go back to those memories, mm. they carry secrets mm. that will help us to heal. And basically, that's what the authentic self is. It's the healed self. Oh, that sounds so nice. Mm. Um, can you think about some particular age this losing the real self starts? When we talk about children, is it later on when we are 25 or very mm. early? I think mostly it starts early. Mm. Um, you know, children uh, are very sensitive. I remember um, that I was uh, very, very shy. And, uh, and you, even if you looked at me, I would blush red as a child. And, uh, and then people would comment, Oh, look, you've embarrassed her. And that was just the worst thing. And, uh, and so I would learn to d either disappear or avoid certain situations um, because, you know, I, I didn't want to feel exposed in that way. And so if I look back to my early memories, I can pick up um, certain things that were painful to me. Um, I remember once very young, I was rejected in a group of friends mm. because of one small thing I did. Mm. And, uh, and you know, it was as if that young child made a decision there and then that she would never expose herself again. Oh. So can you see how then behavior is adapted, it's changed yes. to avoid that pain or um, or maybe to, to get something like love or recognition or something. So I think it, for most of us, I think it starts at quite a young age and I think you're very lucky if, um, if it only happens later in life, but mostly at a young age. I think so. But one question, just you said, like a small child will feel embarrassed and it's quite common actually, or shy. Why do you think someone who is authentic and pure and so lovely, why would they feel embarrassed? Is it, I just got the thought, is it something because um, the world of adults is already full of falsehood and there is some mismatch of, why would that lovely being, mm -hmm. small, child who is five years old feel embarrassed about what? Absolutely and I think um, later in life I did used to ask myself that question but it seemed to me that I just didn't like the attention on me and mm -hmm. if you think about it mm -hmm. it's fear mm -hmm. because will I be accepted? Will I be judged? Mm. So, you know, even at, at such a young age, 
Yes. It's very possible that um, um, certain things are uncomfortable for us. Mm. Mm. So we learn at the very young age this uh, um, kind of uh, we have to deal with the negative feelings like I'm judged or I'm liked, I didn't get love now, or something like that. And yeah. I don't think it's always conscious. I, I think that, um, you know, there are certain tendencies within us mm. and as we develop, um, they get triggered. And we know that every child it has such a different personality, practically from the time they're born. So they're carrying those, um, uh, you know, habits or tendencies and then life just triggers them. And if there's a fear, then we learn to adapt that behavior. And the moment we do that, we are moving away from our authentic self. Wow, I really like this whole, it feels very delicate what happens to us. Mm -hmm. And I like this detective work, what you are giving us, how we can discover the real self. But now, do we have to go back to the five-year-old me and find the real self? Or how, how do we find the real self now? It feel, or is it not possible anymore? Are we having so many different layers of, of uh, falsehood mm. and, and different masks and behaviors? It might be a bit messy situation, actually. Who is real me? Yeah. And this is the question. That is the question, who is the real me? Um, because if we look at the opposite of the real me, it is the false self. And um, we, can, we can talk about the masks we wear, the facades that we put on, um, but in spiritual terms, uh, we could just call that either the ego or the false self. And it can completely take over so that there's no trace actually of the authentic self. But sometimes we catch a glimpse mm. and it's so attractive and we feel so real and so comfortable. And I think that what is a spiritual journey actually if mm -hmm. it's not to really uncover and rediscover that self that we have lost along the way mm. um, and if we um, have the desire that and the sincerity in that desire I think that everything in our lives is there to help us to actually rediscover the authentic self. You know, sometimes we feel the whole universe is against us, but actually my experience is that everything that happens to us is really saying to us, you know, Come back to who you are. Isn't that beautiful? But do we listen? <laughs> and if we don't listen, then the signals also get louder. And sometimes those signals can be painful. So um, it would be nice to hear from you, Belinda, that have you had something that triggered along your journey to be really determined to find the real self? Yes, um, one particular um, experience in my life, um, which is now about um, 12, 11, 12 years ago, um, I was diagnosed with cancer and um, it was a big surprise to me and everyone around me. Um, 
that it was the beginning of the most extraordinary journey. And perhaps not at the time, but quite soon after the experience, um, towards the end of the experience, there was a deep realization that I had become sick with this particular disease because I was way off track. I think physical uh, diseases um, are the, the last signal that life gives you to show you that actually you're, you're not in the right direction. And um, what, I, what I realized was that if I wanted to live, I needed to change myself fundamentally. Mm. And the cancer helped because in many ways, when you come close to death, you know, what it does for you is it sorts out what is important and what is not important. That's very true. And uh, healing myself at an emotional and spiritual level became the focus. Oh. And what that did was it helped me to put to one side something that is a huge contribution to losing the authentic self, and that is the um, opinion of others. Mm. We, I think most of the time we don't know how much um, the opinion of others matters to us and how con what a contributing factor that is um, in losing, losing ourselves and going down that road of uh, pleasing others mm -hmm. so that we can feel comfortable and good about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And um, so when it was clear that the most important thing was to heal, I began to see the, the artificiality within myself because people used to say about me that I'm always calm, I'm very sweet and you know they would give these compliments but then I recognized that it was really about people pleasing mm. and um, I decided um, because I, I really wanted to heal that I was going to Put that to one side and I was going to be as true to myself as I possibly could be and that meant that number one I was going to learn how to express myself mm. because I realized and one of my greatest spiritual teachers actually said to me that one of the causes of cancer is suppression and so I thought at the time that I didn't suppress myself mm -hmm. but when I thought about it more deeply I saw the extent to which I suppressed myself and uh, I told uh, the people in my circle I said I'm going to be changing I'm going to learn to express myself and I don't want you to take offense because it's not about you, it's about me. And I had to teach myself mm. how to, to actually, first of all, know how I felt about something mm. because mm. I put that aside. I think for women, maybe in particular, when you raise children, you think about their needs and the needs of other people in your family and you do put your own needs to one side mm. so I had to learn all over again how I felt about things what I felt uh, sometimes strongly about mm. and so I learned how to speak up express myself 
And I remember once a friend said to me, in, we were planning something, and she said to me, oh, you've changed so much. And I looked at her and I said, yes, and I'm so glad. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's another factor because you, you need courage because you may lose favor with people. Mm. People who thought you were so wonderful, mm. now you're different. And, um, you know, they may not like it. But that's just initially. Uh, when they, you know, over a period of time, if you can come to your authentic self, then other people feel so comfortable that they can come to their authentic self mm. with you. I'm sure you experienced that during your healing process, how other people also open up next to you. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking that it sounds like a fairy tale to find the real self and even the sickness you make it sound like a true gift which is a lovely way of seeing something so challenging. But I was just thinking that, on the other hand, we want to bring our own opinions and say them straight. But then we are a bit afraid that what I say will hurt others. Is there a nice guideline you can give how to start to express yourself or just not to care simply? Or, or just, so it doesn't go over the other extreme mm. that now I'm hurting other people and I don't care. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a lovely question. And I did find that um, at times I was a little bit too honest. Mm. Um, and, but it was interesting because people, they feel the authenticity and generally they don't um, get offended by it mm -hmm. but you learn as you're going because it's something new you learn as you go along and you can see within yourself when you're a little bit too direct mm -hmm. and that that was also something that I had I had mm -hmm. to learn um, and because it's all new ground mm. so you you have to be also patient with yourself yeah. because in in a way it's like a new you that's emerging and of course it's not new it is actually the true you it's the it's the um, the you that got covered up by mm. all the pretense and um, in a way protection actually you know the 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 artificial self or the the um, ego self by nature is very very fragile and that's why how do we know that it's there is because the the ego self always takes offense the smallest thing, someone greets you in the wrong way or doesn't greet you, it scratches a little bit. Um, and then of course sometimes, you know, it's a bigger pain than that. But um, I remember one of my teachers saying that if it hurts, there's ego there. And that was a very, very good um, signal for me. Um, and so, uh, that's a good way actually of um, of checking whether it is the authentic self or the ego self because the authentic self is very comfortable being who they are and so somebody's uh, criticism or um, you know, lack of um, uh, respect or whatever it is, it doesn't bother you. 
that's why we spoke about freedom you know it really this authentic self is the freedom that we all seek that we all desire mm. i would like to hear from you belinda this that what are we really experiencing when we are in connection with the true self you mentioned feeling really really comfortable and yes at least sometimes we feel so uncomfortable and we want to things to change that we would come back to that uh, comfortable feeling is there something else you can guide for us what do we find when we find the real self what did you find well you know it's um it's, it's a, such a simple thing and yet it's so complex I remember after the the um, cancer and when I was really focused on my inner healing and people would say to me or I would say um, you know it helped me to change so much and they would say well how and I would say well I just found myself interesting yeah and and you know it sounds the words actually um don't really give the enormity of what that really is mm. um you know we often talk um in spiritual terms about identification and uh, i think those early experiences in childhood uh, they um kind of nudge us or even like bulldoze us into identifying so deeply with the physical with our own physical form our gender our you know skills or lack of skills um, our qualities and virtues but all associated with the physical identity and this authentic self has absolutely nothing to do with that and i think it's when we truly recognize that the spiritual self is totally separate the authentic self is totally separate from those physical identities and um and then you your whole spiritual approach also changes because I noticed that within myself as well you know m my spiritual life prior to the cancer was one thing and my spiritual life after the cancer was something completely different wow and uh, and all because I was able to to separate the role from the soul or the spirit and then really focus on bringing that spiritual self to the forefront um, and and that's when you can tell that it's really the real you um, that is being expressed and it's not that I don't revert back mm. um, to the ego self. Um, certain situations may still trigger that. But now I'm much more um, easy. It's much easier to actually pick up when I'm not being authentic. Mm. And uh, what are the signs? Well, one of them that I mentioned was if something's a little bit painful, mm. you know, uh, that it scratches a bit. And that pain can come in different ways. Recently, I experienced quite a lot of stress. And, um, uh, and, and the stress and a bit of anxiety was really about travel during this COVID time and all the hoops that you have to jump through in order to travel. And um, I just realized, you know, the authentic self um, uh, always feels safe. Mm. 
and secure. Even in the face of, you know, many things that we, um, and, you know, the world is changing and it is becoming more and more challenging. Um, but if we are true to ourselves and we stay in that authentic self, then we're able to watch the situations of the world and um, be in the world but without experiencing the negativity mm -hmm. that the, the ego self is always feeling so anxious about. Yes. I was just thinking about Belinda that the way you describe this real self, really we all now want to discover it and, and throw away all the falsehood. But is there something that's stopping us? Why, why it's, it feels a bit comfortable to slip into old habits and mm. take those different masks again? Is there something, do we need courage in this journey? Mm. Yes, um, we do need courage, but also one of the things that stops us is that we've had a certain amount of success um, in wearing the masks and putting on the facade. Um, it has been a protection for us. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the example that I gave as a child, I was so um, shy, painfully shy. And so I learned ways of protecting myself from that. Um, so we tend to default back to that because actually that's all we know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the... the um, the crazy thing about it is that actually it keeps us locked into insecurity and fear. Mm -hmm. But so the, the, the reality is that to truly let it go, that requires courage because it feels as if we have to drop our protection. Mm. There's a beautiful saying that says, the one who allows himself to be vulnerable is trusted. Mm. And when I first heard this, I thought about it deeply. And I realized that um, there is a period of time where you have the courage to start this journey and you drop the facades, but there you don't know who the authentic self is. And in that space, you are actually vulnerable. You know, the lobster, uh, when he outgrows his shell, he has to shed it. And if he doesn't, um, the new one will not grow. Mm. But in that time period when he sheds the old shell before the new one grows, he is very vulnerable. Mm. And so we have to have the courage to be truly vulnerable. And it, it's um, sometimes a bit of shaky ground. But, you know, if you are that determined, to really be true to yourself, then you will, whatever it takes, you will do that. Mm. So allow yourself to be vulnerable and you will come out of that vulnerability into a space where you are completely safe. I think, I think that's really, really well said, uh, this we don't like the feeling of being vulnerable. Mm. And if, if one right path is this, that you are naked for a while, we kind of maybe avoid it or think that we can still have the old masks and covers and mm. somehow manage to do it. Yeah, something really, this is a deep work and reflection with yourself. Mm. But um, it would be nice to have also a meditation about this um, some 10-15 minutes, but before that, would you like to share something? 
about the real self? Um, what I'd really like to say is that no matter what you have to go through to find the authentic self, it is uh, to say worthwhile is an underestimation. It is the greatest liberation and the greatest joy to feel comfortable with yourself um, and the beauty that comes out in relationships is very, very special because the authentic self means that your love is authentic, your respect and acknowledgement of others is authentic, everything is authentic. And you feel in your heart um, that you genuinely have love for everyone, irrespective of their behavior. Mm. Because you're able to catch a glimpse of their authentic self, no matter what the masks are. How beautiful. Mm. <laughs> yes, thank you. But uh, shall we start? A small meditation. Mm, yes, let's do that. So wherever you are, sit comfortably and be relaxed and you've listened to a lot of words. So just allow your mind to be free for these few moments. We live in a dimension that is very, very physical and everything in that dimension is um, feeding the physical senses and this um, often is the only source that creates our identity. But for a while we're going to let go of that. We're going to come deep within us to that still quiet place where the authentic self lies. Behind the masks, behind all those learned behaviors that seemed to serve us in some way. And perhaps they did. They kept the fear at a distance but never completely free. The authentic self experiences the original qualities of love and peace. It's as if the soul comes home to itself. And these feelings are completely natural. Peace is natural. Love is natural. And inner joy is natural. Here, 
there is nothing to lose. And so there is no fear. You feel completely connected. Not only to yourself, but to everyone. And connected to God, who is always in the authentic self. be at the same vibration as God. To feel that this is where you belong. With God. In God's world. where everyone is safe, everyone is secure, everyone is beautiful, behind the mask of the ego lies this divine self. And every time we take courage to drop a mask, we are able to see more clearly the real self the true divine self. This is the healing of the soul. And the magic is not only the healing of the individual, but the healing of all whole human family who have lost their way simply because they forgot this pure beautiful being so full of light so full of love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Belinda. Wasn't Thank this you. lovely? And uh, it would be nice to continue another time about this topic to find some other dimensions, but this was really healing. You're right, talking about the self and authentically has a very healing energy. And thank you for the meditation. So thank you for you for being there all this time. And uh, next week, our Sunday talk will be about love. And it is uh, Maya who's going to take us into that topic. So thank you and I wish you a lovely evening and see you another time. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.